Uh, today I'm going to show you how I trim my bow uh, and also apply a little bit of uh, texture in this case the uh, chattering, chattering textures to the surface of my bow and I, as I told you before that uh, I usually dry my bows that when the rim is firm enough and without wobbling I turn it upside down and dry it that way so that uh, because the rim is thinner than the bottom so they will dry more evenly this is my, uh, my experience of uh, drying all my pieces when the rim is hard enough, firm enough I just turn it upside down and dry it all the way that uh, will make sure that uh, it's drying evenly and uh, for the uh, chattering Usually you don't want to chatter, but uh, sometimes if you uh, uh, kind of ma manipulate the uh, chattering, it could be very nice to add to, to the surface of uh, your decoration. And uh, it's, there are many different textures, different chatter mark you can make. And today I'm going to show you how and uh, uh, what will uh, create that kind of a, a pattern and how to do it. But first of all, uh, if you want to get a very nice chattering mark, uh, the first thing is you need to have a very nice center piece. Okay? Your piece has to be very centered. If you have a wobble piece, that is not very easy. Not, e not easy to get a nice chattering mark. And uh, also, the uh, dryness of your part is very important too. You don't want to trim, you don't want to chat when your part is too soft or too dry. Uh, usually it's about the later half stage and uh, that's the, the trimming stage. And uh, if the surface is too dry, you can apply a little bit of water, water to the surface. And if it's too wet, you want to uh, just wait till the right, right time. Okay, the dryness is important. And also, when you are chattering, the speed of your wheel is important too. Uh, you want to turn your wheel very, very fast. So that uh, within uh, maybe 30 seconds, one minute, you can create a very nice surface. You probably uh, cut a, a, a lot of uh, nice or dots or whatever the texture, maybe a thousand times on the surface, um, very uh, uniformly. Um, that uh, create a surface uh, that is very really nice and beautiful. So the wheel speed is important. And uh, the way you hold your tool, how firm, how tight you, uh, you, you hold your tool is important too. And then the, uh, your hand moving speed is important too. When you move it down, up, you don't move it. When you cut it, you want to cut it evenly. Okay, you don't want to move your hand up and down, up and down. You have to do, you, you need to practice that you, when you move your hand slowly and very steady, you go all the way to the bottom. And uh, also the uh, tool type, okay. Almost every tool you can use, the, you, you could create it with the tool to make some uh, chatter mark, uh, depending on your experience. But uh, some of the tool that is easier to than other to get the uh, uh, chatter mark, uh, like this is my uh, own uh, custom made, my homemade actually. I made it myself. Uh, this kind of tool is very easy to get bouncing, and when the tool is bouncing, you get you are easy, it's easier to uh, create a chatter mark. Um, different shape of the tool to create different type of uh, chatter mark and uh, I will explain it later. Okay, let's uh, start it. First thing you want to do is make sure the surface is nice and smooth. So you want to cut to the right uh, kind of a surface. Actually, this is not very straight. Let me recenter it. Ok, 
Okay. Make sure the surface is nice and smooth. Burnish the surface a little bit and show you the first cheddar mark. Okay, this is the uh, traditional tool that you come up with the uh, basic kit. Uh, even this kind of tool, you can get a, a cheddar mark too. Okay, but. Uh, I kind of uh, very lightly hold my tools and once I initiate and I just let it go all the way okay you can see uh, maybe it's hard for you to see uh, let me bring the camera closer Okay, this is the uh, cheddar mark that I am. I was using this traditional tool that I can create it. Uh, once the tool is bouncing, on, you just uh, kind of uh, let it go all the way down. And when you're moving your hand, you have to move your hand uh, very consistently. Okay, and one more time, maybe I could cut it a bit deeper. see that chapter mark here okay so almost any kind of tool you could uh, create a uh, chapter mark All right let me bring the uh, camera back a little bit I the kind of remove the cherry mark I use the traditional tool to uh, create and now I'm gonna just use this tool you can see the how many different patterns that I could create it by using just only this one tool very uh, uh, easy to get it all right 
first uh, I would use this one by just using one of the corner and when the cherry mark is coming you can see that my tool is kind of a bouncing right there so you have to hold it at a certain angle so that the uh, the part is kicking back your tool and your tool start to vibrate so the angle of holding the tool is very important okay, so this one I'm holding just use the corner of this tool spin my wheel a bit faster Moving my hand slowly, So let me bring closer so that you will be able to see the surface. See the surface? Just using one corner, one corner of my trimming tool. You can see that I create a, a kind of like brick type of a chatter mark here. Okay, move it back and then I two different kind of uh, chattering. Let me remove the surface. And this time I'm going to use the whole blade, okay, this whole length of my trimming tool. And maybe hold it a an slanted angle so my line will be uh, kind of a slanted. So now you see this different uh, kind of a texture on the surface because I'm holding my tool at an angle. Okay. Let me remove the uh, texture again.
since I already cut uh, several times of uh, the surface, this is going to be my last uh, cherry mark. Otherwise, this bowl is going to be too thin. So I will do the final cut and uh, using different kind of a tool. Okay, this is the the other one. It's only. Uh, a little curve here. I'm going to use the little curve of this tool and create maybe hundreds of dots on the surface. And again, I'm holding my tool about, uh, I would say, so this is about 90 degrees of the angle and I'm going to hold it more than 90 degrees so it's the tool is kind of cutting this angle, okay? Cut it from this direction. This is 90 degrees. Um, this is more than 90 degrees. So for that, because of that more than 90 degrees, the tool is kind of, kind of a bouncing, 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 and you get a touch. Okay. So I spin my wheel a bit faster. Move my hand very consistently. So as you can see that I created many a little dots on the servers. Okay, let's finish this one and then I use another one to do the demonstration because this one is getting too thin already. And uh, from my previous video, I have uh, told you about uh, how to prevent the ass crack. Because the, I always throw my balls up the hum, um, uh, which way it is not uh, 
compressed enough for the bottom portion and uh, if the bottom is getting too thick I always have will have I'm sure 100% that I will have as crack so to prevent it from happening uh, my way of uh, correcting the S crack problem is I trim my button thin enough. Uh, always, uh, I would say about one eighth of an inch, less one eighth, one eighth of an inch. I would say about two millimeters, no more than three millimeters. And uh, I'm just checking it by hearing the sound, but uh, in my previous video, I show you by uh, using a special uh, measurement, you can measure the right uh, thickness of the bottom of your pot. You could use the measurement to practice your tapping skill because uh, uh, at certain sound it sounds when your bottom is thinner it sounds higher but uh, you could use the measurement to measure approximately how thick your bottom is and the call, you just remember the sound accordingly. That's how you practice. And I pay attention to every detail of my part, especially uh, the bottom portion. Usually I am using this uh, piece of uh, little shiny rock to we call burnish, burnish the bottom. Kind of uh, compressed here on the bottom. Because you're going to use your, your bowl, your mugs, your pitcher every day serving on the table and you don't want you don't want it to scratch the table. So uh, I usually burnish. And even after fire, I'm using a diamond stick to kind of uh, 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 grind, grind in the bottom a little bit. Okay. So this ball is down. Smooth the uh, the rim. So this is the uh, finished bowl of uh, the uh, check cherry mark. Like this, this is the uh, surface.
Okay, and uh, let me cut it open. I know uh, people don't like me to cut it open, but uh, um, this is for the uh, uh, purpose of uh, showing people the work, especially when I'm doing a demonstration or uh, teaching. I usually like to uh, cut it open to show my students. So this is the uh, finished ball of the uh, chapter mark. Um, I told you that bottom, this is about two millimeters. Um, here it's a little bit thin because you see that I've been cutting several times of the uh, cherry mark and I cut it and then I remove it so it's very thin here already. So. But you can see that the whole section picture of the bowl and this is the back okay I am going to use different bowl to show you different texture to get another bowl And uh, also one more thing that uh, let me give you a suggestion. If you wanna uh, do the cherry mark, I think using the porcelain is a better choice because you don't have a grok to kind of interfere your mark, or you wanna use the finer clay like uh, B-Mix without grog, the final clay or even if you have a stoneware before you start to cut your cheddar mark you want to use the uh, the rock or the uh, rubber rib to uh, smooth the surface so that your surface is nice and smooth and then you cut so that you will have more contrast. You will have a better contrast of your surface. Otherwise, if the surface is rough, and then you try to use the, uh, they try to uh, cut to chatter, it kind of interferes with your surface. So this is my suggestion. And uh, if you wanna practice how uh, to move your hand consistently. Okay, this is a, a one way to do it. I get a tool and you try to uh, kind of cut in lines, okay? The lines all the, the line all the way. 
and uh, you want to practice that your hands moving very steady so that you, your line is very consistently all the way down okay. so I'm showing how to practice if you want to uh, uh, have a very nice uh, nice texture nice chattering texture okay. spin your wheel a bit faster and move your hands slowly but very consistently okay. this is how you practice Let me bring closer so you will be able to see the service. So you see that I am spin my wheel and then move my hand very consistently and evenly. So this line is under one line but all the way down to the bottom. It's very uh, smooth and even. Each line is very even so that you need to practice this way so your hand is steady and then later on when you are uh, doing the chattering it will be easier and you will be uh, nice because all your, your pattern is very uh, systematic and very uniformly go all the way down and when you chatter, you don't want to go back and forth, okay? Maybe it's only one time event, so you have to uh, very, uh, try to get your hands steady and moving very consistently and slowly. So now I'm going to remove Another thing that I usually sharpen my tools, okay, especially the cutting blade, I want to be uh, very sharp so that uh, I could uh, I could cut it uh, nice and deep. Okay, this time I'm gonna hold my tool a different way. Okay, using this whole blade here, the right side of the blade. And I want to uh, trigger the vibration. And when I'm tri I'm going to trigger the vibration, it's harder by just cutting this, trigger triggering the uh, vibration. So I'm going to use the tip of my this mark to cut it through the foot here. And because the angle, it starts to vibrate this tool and then I initiate that the vibration and then I cut it all the way down. Okay, so so I initiate the vibration.
Okay, let me bring closer the camera. So you see that this line is all the way a straight line. Somehow it, it managed to cut it at the same spot, so it's all straight down. You can see the line. do the final chattering for this bowl. This is the uh, final finish pole with the uh, chattering mark. Um, it's it's very light, okay, very light. Um, this is the inside. Uh, to make a bowl a nice bowl, the inside is very important too. So always I take care of the inside, and uh, for the outside you can always trim it to uh, to make it 
look nicer, but the uh, inside is very important because everybody sees the inside of the ball first. So the inside curve is very important for making a really nice ball. Okay, so this is conclude my chattering demonstration on the how you can practice and get a very nice result. Okay, thanks for watching.